Howdy y'all, this is the redneck live splitter we built. Seriously though, this is a walk around close up look at the flywheel log splitter that I built, also known as the wheel of death or redneck log splitter. I used only an arc welder to weld the whole thing. I built it on a strong 4x4 chassis so that it could be made into a trailer later if needed. The main structure is made of heavy walled tube and box. The bearings are fully floating so they cannot be misaligned. This made construction very simple. Millimeter differences do not matter. Since this video, the splitter has received a coat of rust kill. The cutting table is made of 12 millimeter plate steel. As the flywheel spins, the X head passes through the cutting table. I made the cutting table short to avoid fingers being trapped between the wood and the cutting table. Obviously, people worry about the safety of this style of log splitter. The safety comes down to the operator using it. If you know how to operate it, it's about as safe as a bandsaw. If you put your hand in the wrong place on a bandsaw, you're going to get it cut off. The same applies to this style of log splitter. The frame sits in notches cut into a log. When we set the frame on top of a flat surface, the splitter moved around. So that's why we use the log with the notches. The rebar you see is part of an old safety guide that didn't work out. You'll see our lucky penny set into the concrete, giving luck to anyone who uses the splitter. I've put a lot of bracing under the table so the force of the axe head slamming into the piece of wood transmits down to the 4x4 chassis. The frame never flexes or moves when running, everything is really rigid. The tractor wheel is a bit over a metre in diameter. We started off casting a small amount of concrete into the wheel and we found it didn't have enough force to split wood, so we kept adding to it. If I was to build it again, I'd make the wheel even heavier. Other flywheel log splitters we saw had a lot less weight in the wheel, but we realised they are cutting a lot lighter, easy to split wood, so we had to increase the weight a lot to split radiata pine. That's just a pile of wood at the time of filming, but so far it's cut at least 40 cord of pine. I used a 3 quarter axe head rather than a maul head, the more heads are thicker and they tend to blow the wood apart too much, making for dangerous heavy projectiles. The three quarter axe head slices through the wood rather than aggressively forcing it apart. I welded a steel gusset behind the head to reinforce it. People who have seen it have been concerned about the metallurgy of the axe head and the possibility of the welds cracking. We check it every time before and after using and there are no cracks yet. The axe head is also welded to a backing plate. The belt runs around the edge of the rim of the tractor wheel and down to the pulley on the motor hanging below. The motor is a brand new 6.5 horsepower Chinese Honda clone engine with a 2 to 1 reduction drive. It's pull start, it's very basic, it's cheap to fix or replace. The motor is mounted on a pivot so the weight of the motor hanging down is what tensions the belt. This is the 2 to 1 reduction drive on the front of the motor. That's a Mylock pulley. The wheel is running too fast compared to the engine at the moment. If we get a smaller pulley, it would be better. This spring pulls the engine forward slightly so that the belt, pulley and tractor wheel are aligned properly so the belt doesn't pull off the wheel or run to the middle of the wheel. The bolt-up wheel flange has gussets welded to the shaft, then the face was laved up true. It was the only part I couldn't engineer at home. We're happy with the splitter. It's got no expensive hydraulic equipment, no maintenance. It's super reliable and it splits wood as fast as you can get it to the splitter. Click on the link to see the log splitter splitting wood.